good ease with your knees. Oh, in the kitchen with your girl, this food will rock your world. What is up, you guys? Welcome back to another episode of Good Eats with Shanice. I am your host for the evening, Shanice Alicia, and here we have our lovely co-host by the title. You guys can see we are about to hop in and make twice-baked potatoes. Some people call them double-stuffed potatoes. Nonetheless, I rarely find a person that does not like a good loaded baked potato. Y'all tell me. Y'all tell me. Any whom, before we hop into this recipe, did you guys miss the segment here on my channel? I know. I know. Hold your applause. Hold your applause. We'll have time for question and answers at the end of our show. But before we continue, I want you guys to go ahead and give this video a thumbs up just because you miss it that much. Comment down below if you've ever made and or had this dish. And don't forget to hit that red subscribe button, baby, because we are so close to 10K and I don't want anybody telling me how underrated I was when you catch me down the line at a meal because we're going to get there. So without further ado, you guys know, tap the bell. Let's Let's hop into the recipe so with this the preparation is probably the longest part of this entire process the very first thing that you want to do is go in and thoroughly wash your potatoes this is very important because the skin of the potato will serve as your bowl so to speak so once your potatoes are completely clean you're going to take a paper towel to pat dry them and then lay them out allow them to air dry a little bit more for about five minutes then another important part to cutting this process down a little bit in the terms of time is to take a fork and pierce your potato in different areas just to give it some room to vent and breathe as it's baking the next step you're going to take an oil of your choice i particularly like olive oil so i went in with two capfuls of my olive oil i dressed it up on my potatoes and then i rubbed it into the skin another important step of the potato skin becoming your bowl at the very end of this recipe you want it to be nice and crispy as it continues to bake then the last step before we throw them into the oven will be to salt your potato this right here is optional completely optional and you can use any salt that you please it can be pink himalayan salt it could be pure sea salt it could be iodized 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 what's the word I deny that what what is the word how I pronounce it uh, use regular salt any salt that you find anything to give the skin of your potato some flavor go in with it go crazy then you're going to simply lay them into a pan or you can put them on a cookie sheet whatever works out best for you we're going to set our oven to 400 degrees let it get all the way up there and then we're going to place our potatoes in for about an hour to an hour and 15 minutes and you want to make sure that your potatoes bake all the way through that way you'll have a nice consistent texture when you're scooping out and about to load your potato before you add it back in and bake it once again. That's the double stuff part. Y'all see where we going here? That's the double stuff part. Y'all already know, it wouldn't be an episode of Good Eats with Shanice if your girl didn't hit you with them angles. You are mine. So you guys can see a little better of a view of what I'm about to explain to you as I go through the process. So first things first, as you see, well, not technically. You can't really see that my potatoes are nice and baked, but if you wanna check on the status of your potatoes, I'll give you a little hint. All you have to do with a knife is go in, and if it goes completely through, your potatoes are nice and ready. So you see there, my knife is going completely through. I don't have any hard areas. If you did come across a hard area, you want to put that potato back in there just so you can cook it thoroughly and it's nice and ready. So, I'm going to take my knife here, insert it so that I can start by cutting a thin layer off the top. So this thin layer, I'm just going to place to the side, put my potato down, and then I'm gonna go in and do 
the other one. So after you take your potatoes out of the oven, I allowed them to cool down for maybe about 15 minutes. Most times I do them as soon as I take them out. However, it depends on what your tolerance is for heat. I can touch them with no problem after 15 minutes, but if you feel as though you need to wait a little bit longer, wait maybe up to 30 minutes, but you still want the inside of your potato to be nice and warm so that all of your ingredients melt nice and easy on the inside. And we're going to take a spoon and gently scoop all of the potato out of this and into a clean bowl. And if you happen to have a little boo-boo here, it's okay because, you know, the rest of your potato is still pretty solid. So, you know, you just want to take out as much potato as possible without doing that. But I'm rough, so don't mind me. Okay, guys, so here we have our potato bolts as together as they're going to be. This was a tough batch, okay? This was a tough batch, but this is what they should look like. Here are our potatoes from the inside and we're about to load them up. So I'm going to simply take some half and half. I'm going to do some sharp shredded cheese. I'm also going to have a lot of green onion in there. I'm going to use some sour cream and then I'm going to season it up with my Tony's Original Creole Seasoning. You guys know how I get down. You can use salt and pepper if you please. It's definitely preference and how you want to season your food. I am also going to use my substitution butter because as you guys know I did stop using regular butter just for the purpose of healthier eating because you know some things already be unhealthy enough without the butter and this is just a coconut spread extra virgin it has a really good salt to it and believe it or not it does not have a coconut oil type of taste so you guys know, you guys know, you gotta try it. I get it from Aldi if you're looking to try it. It's really good, it's really good. So once I have all of those ingredients in there, I'm going to gently mix this back and forth. I'm going to use a fork just to keep the consistency nice and thick and not too mushy. But if you do make mashed potatoes, this is the same type of ordeal here. So I'm just gonna mix it all together. All right guys, so here is the finished product and we're about to put them back into our boat and I'm actually going to set the oven to 350 now. Let that warm up while we do this part. Now I'm going to dress it up with some chives and some shredded cheese on the top. I'm simply going to lightly do that because I feel like we have enough on the inside, but presentation, <laughs> presentation. 
So now that I have it nice and dressed up, I'm going to put it back into the oven. The oven is set to 350 and I'm going to let those simply sit in there for maybe about 15 to 20 minutes until the cheese on top melts. And once I pull them out, I will be back for a taste test, baby. Do you see how easy that recipe is? Brief intermission. Do you see how easy it is? The longest thing that you have to do is wait on the potatoes to cook. Period. Okay, fool. So this is what we're working with. Look at those potatoes. They look so good. Look at them. That cheese is nice and melted. We have a situation going on right here. So I'm about to pull them out and we can go in for our bite. So this is our potato. See what we're working with? About to go in for a bite. But of course, before I have to do a little thumbnail -y lamb. So let's see here. So thumbnail done and we're about to go in for a bite. But let me just tell you guys this. Actually, this is the first time that I'm doing this without bacon bits because shout out to all the grown folks out here that don't eat pork anymore because I'm trying to get on the train. Um, and secondly, without real butter. Okay, so it's just a different atmosphere that I'm about to step into. So let's see what we're talking about because your girl is a little nervous. However, comma, whatever you like to stuff your potatoes with, you guys know, I say do what works out best for you and your taste buds, your lifestyle, what you're interested in. Because honestly, you can put anything in here. I mean, people do what in baked potatoes? Chili, shrimp, broccoli, cheddar cheese, mozzarella, whatever the case may be. So do what works out best for you, sis, okay? but um super simple recipe like i said before nothing to it but honestly to do it longest thing is the prep time of the potatoes actually cooking so let's see i'm not gonna eat the whole thing i'm gonna let babe eat the rest of these but you know i'm just here just here for you guys it's not the most healthy meal from this segment but it gets the job done when you just want to have one of those days we talked about it Oh yeah. Wait a minute, cuz how long? Is it the onion? That's good, yeah. Mmm. Let me tell you, when you do baked potatoes or any type of potato that you have to mash, having chunks of the potato in there that aren't mashed, the consistency that rolls around with the ma mm, that's good there. Yeah. See, that's my problem. Then I say I wasn't finna eat this whole thing. Mm. I haven't had these in so long. Wow, wow, wow. God made this. Mother Mary breast milk made this, cause listen. Babe, when the last time we had these? Okay, discipline, discipline, self-control. It's good. All right. This is the last bite, last bite. Last bite before we close out. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-mm-mm. -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, you guys, that wraps up this episode of Good Eats with Shanice. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you learned something new, and I hope you're looking forward to trying this recipe at your home for you, your bae, or your family. It's super simple, like I've been mentioning over and over again. No brainer, first time cook, beginner, whatever the case may be, you can get this done, okay? Step by step, add in what works out best for you and give the recipe towards your lifestyle and what you prefer to have in it, have fun, okay? And like I always tell you guys, I'm not a chef, but I do get a lot of my inspiration from Pinterest. So if you guys wanna follow me over on my Pinterest board so you can kinda see the things that I'm tagging and pinning into my folders, you can do that as well. It is Shanice Alicia, just like it is on all of my social media platforms. You guys already know the drill. If you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Comment down below if you're interested in trying this recipe. If you have before, let me know what I did different, what you do different, what we should try for the next go around. Don't forget to hit that red subscribe button, baby. Tap the bell so you never miss another video upload from your girl because we are hitting 10K this year and you don't want to miss out when you catch me down the road at a milli. So I will see you guys in my next video. Peace, guys.